In this video, I'll show you how to create a events website to sell and manage tickets using WooCommerce in just a few simple steps. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay, so here we are on our demo site and I've just set up a few test events here. So for example, this healing um, retreat. So if we go ahead and click on it, Okay, so here we are on our events page and currently I've just set up a simple event here. We can go ahead and purchase our ticket. You can see there's five available and we'll manage the purchasing process using WooCommerce to give us more flexibility when it comes to promotion, offering coupons and so much more. So if you want to create a similar setup on your WordPress website, the first step is to go ahead and download the events um, ticking plugin. For this example, I'll be using the plus version which allows us to use WooCommerce. You can also use a free version as well, but that won't allow you to use um, WooCommerce instead. So the free version forces you to use the events calendar on e-commerce platform, which the only payment method available is Stripe and PayPal. If that's fine for you, then maybe just the free version is good enough for what you want to do. But in my case, I'm using the plus version and also I'll show you how you can run an effective promotional strategy as well using the dynamic price and then discount rules plugin by WooSuite. So just head over to WooSuite.com, go ahead and download the dynamic price and then discount rules plugin. Once you've done so, let's head back over to our dashboard and we'll get started. Okay, so now we just need to install a few plugins. So I'm just going to navigate to my install plugins and I'll show you the required plugins. Okay, so I'll be using um, the events calendar plugin. Um, it's a free plugin and I'll also be using the events tickets and the events um, plus plugin, which um, we discussed earlier as well. And I'm assuming you're already using WooCommerce. Okay, so to get these two plugins, again, I'll leave all the links in the description below um, with regards to the plugins that I'm using, okay, to make it super simple for yourself. So you just want to go ahead and navigate to plugins, add new, go ahead and search for the events calendar plugin. Go ahead and download and install this. It's free, as I mentioned, and go ahead and also download the events tickets plugin as well. And if you've downloaded a dynamic price and then discount rules plugin by WeSuite, you'll just go ahead and click add new. Go ahead and upload and install the plugin in which you've just downloaded. OK, so now with that out of the way, we'll go ahead and create our first events. So we'll navigate over to events and then we'll click add new. In my case, I'm just going to click on events to see a list of all the events that I've created. Okay, so you can see I've got two events on a system and I'm just going to go ahead and click on it just to show you exactly how we've set it up. Okay, so I'm just going to click edit here. Okay, so you just go ahead and add your events name. So for example, um, a Turtle Yoga Tuesdays with Ben or Brian, whoever. Okay, then we've just got some description about the event. Here I've added a, um, a category for this event, this event category. So this is important when we... Um, go ahead and start running a certain promotions um, regarding our events tickets. Okay, so the events category is important. So it's important that you categorize your event. Okay, and then when we scroll down to time and date here, go ahead and enter in the start and end date as well. Okay, so if it's an all day event, we can just go ahead and click all day and then select the specific day that it's running on. Okay, I'm just gonna leave that as default for this example. Okay, so where it says location here, the venue location, you just wanna go ahead and create a new venue. In my case, I've already added one here, but for you, you just go ahead and create your um, a venue location. So for example, we can click this and then we'll just enter in the address. So city, country, state, postcode, et cetera, et cetera. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, you can add a phone number and a website URL as well so the user can find out more information on this particular venue. In my case, since I've already created one before, I'm just going to leave it as um, this Turtle Bay Yoga. Okay, and then organizers. So if there's a person in charge of organizing this event or multiple person, you can just go ahead and add them here. So for example, you would just go ahead and click create and then you'll enter in this person's phone number, website, um, email address and so on. Again, since I've already done all this ahead of time for you, I'm just going to go ahead and select this organizer, which I've got on the system. OK, and I think that's it for our event um, so far. We'll just add a featured image here. 
so you'll just click um, add featured image i've already added one okay so this is our event um completed so now when we just go ahead and hit um publish in your case we can go ahead and view the event Okay, so we've got our event here, which is fine. Okay, so now the next step, we'll go ahead and create a ticket um, for our event. Okay, so I'm just gonna head back over here to this event. And then when we scroll down here, we can see a section which says um, a ticket. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click um, new ticket. You can add a RSVP as well, but I'm just gonna go ahead and add our ticket here. Okay, so since we're using WooCommerce to manage our tickets, each time we add a new ticket, it will um, mirror that in WooCommerce. Okay, so I've just created one here. Well, I'm creating one here, which says general tickets. And then when we head over to our product page, we'll see a new product titled general ticket there. So we can give this a description. Okay, and then the sale date, um, start and end date. We'll just, well, I'm gonna leave this as default. You can go ahead and set one if you want. Um, but if we leave it blank, it will basically um, just close the ticket off once the um, event date has passed. Okay, so it will keep selling up until the event and then it will just automatically close it. So I'll just leave it blank for now. And then for the price, I'm going to say um, it's $75 for this ticket. Okay, ticket capacity. I'm going to set mine to set the capacity for this ticket only. So I'm gonna go ahead and select um, 20. So we've only got 20 um, spaces for this event. Okay, when we navigate to advanced, we can add a SKU code here. Okay, attendee collection. So I'm gonna go ahead and select allow individual attendee collection. Okay, and then attendee information. So when you use Event Tickets Plus, um, you'll have the option here to add custom fields so you can collect more information from your attendees. Okay, I'm just gonna leave this um, as it is for now because we'll be using WooCommerce. So if we want it as well, we can get those information um, on the WooCommerce checkout page. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save ticket. And now when we view this event, we should see the option to purchase a ticket. So up here you can see that it's $75 a spot. Okay, so it's saying the ticket's no longer available. That's because the event date's actually passed. <laughs> so let's head back over to um, our event here. And let's go ahead and edit um, the end date here. So currently it's past this time for me. So let's just set it to end um, for everyone in the future. And then let's just hit update. Okay, so now we can see um, our tickets displaying just fine. And then if we add one to our cart, so let's go ahead and hit um, get ticket. Here you can see we've got um, this ticket here in our basket, general ticket. Okay, and now we'll go ahead and check the WooCommerce products section. And then we can go ahead and edit the featured image. So let's navigate to products, um, all products. And now here we can see this general ticket here for sale. And it's got the SKU code as well, which we um, entered earlier. Okay, so let's just go ahead and set a featured product image. Let's go ahead and select this image here. Okay. Okay, and since we've installed the dynamic pricing and discount rules plugin, we've got this extra tab here and we can create various different offers. So we can create um, buy one, get one free um, offers, get 10% off and so much more other um, um, promotional offers, but we'll get to that shortly. So let's just go ahead and update this product. And now when we refresh our cart page, we can see um, the product featured image should update. Okay, so now it's updated. And if we change the price on a product page as well, it'll automatically um, update on our events page as well. Okay, so now I'll show you how to create a simple but effective promotion strategy that we've seen many of our customers use. So if we head back over to our dashboard, then we'll navigate to WeSuite and then Dynamic Pricing Rules. Okay, we'll go ahead and navigate to Advanced and then we're gonna create a simple but effective rule. So let's say, for example, if we want to increase the amount of people showing up at our event, right? So we can say um, if someone buys um, one ticket, they can get 50% off the other ticket, right? So we can encourage them to bring a plus one. Okay, so let's just go ahead and click add category pricing. So we can just give this a name for internal purposes. So we can say 
and then we'll just leave this as cart line okay so we can set it to work off um, the total amount purchased from a specific category but we'll just leave it to um, cart line item quantity okay and then here we'll go ahead and select events category okay so since we're using the events calendar plugin it was created by modern tribe but i think they got acquired um so we'll just go ahead and select the tribe event category here okay and then we'll go ahead and select um, a category from our events category that's a bit confusing so when we navigate to events here and then we'll go events category if we remember at the start of this video we mentioned categorizing our events right and then one of my category was um, retreat so we've got two events on the retreat so depending on how many different categories you have it will show up um, here okay so here i'm saying that a user needs to purchase one well they need to purchase products within this um, retreat category and then we'll give them a discount within um, the retreats category as well so the reason why we've got these two options here is like say for example we had a retreat category and then we had a, a spa category for example so maybe we're having a spa day um, as an event or for a ticket or whatever Okay, so we can say if you attend one of our um, retreat, we'll give you X amount of percentage um, if you purchase a spa day package, for example. So that's the reason why we've got um, the two options here. Okay, and then here where it says applies to, I'm going to set this to everyone. You can set it to um, guest users only, which are users logged out of your site, meaning existing users won't be able to claim um, this particular offer. You can select a specific user role or a specific user. But again, I'm just going to leave mine um, to everyone. If you wanted this to apply to first time buyers only, then you can just go ahead and enable this option here. Again, I'm going to leave mine as um, default for now. Okay, and then and finally where it says um, processing type I'm going to go ahead and select special offer so you can select bulk offer if you want to run a promotion like buy five tickets and we'll give you X amount of discount so this is when you'll use the bulk processing mode tiered pricing um, you probably won't ever use this um, method this is we usually see um, our wholesalers using this method um, so we'll ignore this for now and then special offer, I'm going to show you exactly how that works shortly. And then we can create um, a bundled um, discount as well. So we can say purchase free tickets for um, $90, for example. OK, so I'm going to select special offer. Special offer will allow us to create um, offers like buy one, get one free, buy two, get X amount of percentage off and so on. But for example, if you remember, I'm going to create an offer which says if they purchase two tickets, the second one, they'll get 50% off. So essentially, they need to purchase one ticket. OK, so in this purchase section here, they need to purchase one ticket and they'll receive a discount on the second ticket. So one ticket. It might be a bit confusing, but all together, they'll be purchasing two tickets, right? So they purchase one ticket and then they'll receive a discount on the second ticket. OK. And then we'll say um, a percentage discount here of 50%. So there's no need to add the percentage sign. And then here you can set this to repeating, um, yes or no. I wouldn't set it to repeating. So if you set it to repeating, let's say for example, um, someone purchased four products, right? It means a rule. If you set this to yes, it means the rule would run um, infinitely. So um, if they purchase four tickets, essentially they'll be getting 50% off two tickets as opposed to when we set it to no, they'll just be getting 50% off one ticket. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save changes here. Before I do that, I think I'll skip this step. You can trigger this promotion via a coupon code. Okay, so you can set this to run with or without a coupon code. If you want it to run with a coupon code, you'll just select this option here. Go ahead and select the coupons from what you've got on the system. Currently, I've got no coupons on our system. Okay, but for example, we could say welcome 50 or something like that or W50, whatever the coupon code is. And then whenever a user use that coupon code on checkout, then they'll be able to access this discount here. In my case, I'm going to set this to run without coupon. And if you wanted, you could set a start date and an end date so you can schedule this promotion to run essentially. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save changes. Okay, and now when we navigate to the front end, we can go ahead and test out this um, promotion. Okay, so here I've already got um, two tickets, 
Well, I've actually got three tickets from our retreat category. I'm going to remove one. Okay, so currently it seems we're giving $50 off instead of 50% off. Okay, so let's head back over to our dynamic pricing and discount rules. And then here when we recheck the rule, here you can see it's a price discount of $50 off. Okay, so we just need to change this to percent discount. Okay, and now when we save changes and refresh the page again, we should be getting 50% off um, our second ticket. Okay, so now let's go ahead and refresh this page. Okay, so it added another one to our basket. So let's just um, remove that extra one. Okay, so 50% of 75 is 37.5. And then when we add the first ticket onto that, which is 75, it gives us a total of a 112.50, okay? So our discount rule is working exactly how it should. So this is just one example of what you can do with the dynamic pricing and discount rules plugin. You can get even more creative to ensure that you've got a sellout event each and every time. And as you create a events website to sell and manage event tickets with WooCommerce in just a few simple steps. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more videos like this. And if you've got any questions, leave it in the comment box below or reach out to support and we'll get back to you as soon as possible.